Okay, let's go home. There's nothing out here anymore. No one is selling affordable retro games. I mean, hell, you almost got into a fight with that dude over a $200 Sega Genesis. $200 for a Sega Genesis Model 1. It wasn't even a CDX. You didn't even have the hookups. I don't know if these people are getting their pricing from eBay, price charting, or like some drunk idiot uncle who said, oh, I had this when I was your age, it's worth this amount of money. Like, what are we gonna do? We can't find anything. I'm starting to think it's a combo with the drunk idiot uncle. Like, I mean, come on. It's always the drunk idiot uncles. Nobody does the research. No, and apparently neither do we. We need to go home. I don't know, but like, let's just go back and we'll we'll go back home and we'll, we'll reevaluate, then we'll get back out there, okay? And then we'll find something. Yeah, we have to. We'll find something. Yeah, uh, okay. If we happen upon something on the way home, great. If not, we'll look up some other stuff, you know? All right, let's just go. Dude. What? No, you can't just let him do it. His sign said he had games. Maybe he has something we need. This guy's a maniac. This is what we've been looking for all day. He may not be a maniac. <laughs> okay, he might be a maniac. How's it going, man? How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Great. I'm doing nice. great. Nice. So you have some yeah. games? Yeah, man. Oh, I do. It's the best. Sweet. I'm looking forward to you like Sega stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you. I appreciate you guys not... Leaving me there. <laughs> okay. Where are we headed? Oh, well, we just gotta go that way! Mine! Yeah, you know, this guy's looking like he's ready for some games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turn here, turn here. Wait, left or right, left or right. <laughs> Both. <laughs> I'm kidding. Go right. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> How sure is sure? Where are we turn? No, right here, right here, right okay. here. Okay. <laughs> All right, now you gotta turn left here. We can't. I don't care. Let's see, you gotta. Uh, it's a hidden road, I'll get past it. Now you gotta turn around. Damn it! <laughs> there it is. Yeah! Right. Let's go! <laughs> Are we there? Oh, man. Ah, oh, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> what is that? Oh, oh, this is a uh, Sega Nomad. This, you know, the portable Sega Genesis <laughs> from the 90s. Do you from mind if I see it? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that Jack Link's? Uh, oh, we're going to what? What? I mean, uh, yeah, 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 it's, Jack, it's Jack Link from the, from the grocery store. Well, uh, <laughs> how much further to your place? I want to see what you have. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> 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 there he goes. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> oh. 
We're game collectors. He's a game collector. It is a hobby that encompasses every nationality, every religion, every race. It's something that unifies all of us as people. And I want to see what he has, a fellow game collector. You're gonna pay this man? Pay him? <laughs> Fuck no, we're gonna rob him. Shit! <laughs> Hello, neighbor. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Hey, check out that one, you know. Uh, it's like, you know, that's a, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, check out that one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does this smell like chloroform? By late 1995, the Sega Genesis was beginning its death rattle. The company had, up to this point, stretched out the lifespan of the system with numerous add-ons and variations. The most recent, the Sega CDX, was another attempt to revive a system that was already on its way out. The system that cemented the 16-bit revolution and twisted the knife into Nintendo by igniting the console wars was now in his twilight years, offering Werther's to his grandchildren. My Werther's original. He's somebody special too. And bitching at the neighborhood kids to stay off his lawn. Sega, in all of their wisdom, decided to release a portable, handheld version of the console to act as the proverbial yellow Corvette convertible, trying to regain some of its popularity and recapture the youth of the system. Shut your trap. But it wound up with the same reception as the balding dad who pulls up in traffic, blasting Freebird, receiving awkward sideways glances from gamers and shouts of OK Boomer from the fans who were wanting more. Sega's new 32-bit CD-based system, the Saturn, was released just a year prior and was the definition of next-gen. Touting state-of-the-art 3D graphics and CD-quality soundtracks, while the Genesis was strung along with Sega squeezing every possible scent from the system. With the video game market ever-evolving and expanding, it was time to place the Genesis out to pasture and let it live out its days as one of the retired heavyweights of its generation. But Sega had other plans! Modeling an idea off a limited console called the Sega Mega Jet, a console they had developed for Japan Airlines, the system was a portable Sega Genesis that could be rented during flights, allowing patrons to connect to the in-flight TVs and play their Genesis games while traveling. In a bold move, Sega decided to launch their new Genesis handheld, the Nomad, in North America only, attempting to fill a gap in the gaming market that didn't even exist, making a portable version of a non-portable system. Sega had ventured down this road before with the Game Gear by adapting the internal hardware of the Master System and building its own dedicated library. It was an idea that worked well, but couldn't compare to the beast that was the Game Boy. Even with its larger, backlit, and colored screen, Nintendo was taking Sega's lunch money and shoving them into lockers. Lockers that were absolutely needed by fans to house the dozens of AA batteries that the Game Gear would devour. This would be an issue the Game Gear's follow-up would also inherit. Sega did set their sights high, hoping to develop a system that featured a touchscreen interface. It would have been the first game system to have this feature, even two years before Tiger Electronics' Gamecom, which was surprisingly the first system to offer this. Alas. Cost kept the Nomad from receiving the new touchscreen and made Sega decide to borrow the same screen that was used in the Game Gear. This was a decision that shifted the focus of the Nomad to become the handheld version of the Genesis. More buttons were added to reflect the Genesis' six-button controller layout and expand its capability to include most of the Genesis library. But it lacked 100% compatibility due to Sega omitting a reset button. Sucks for you, X-Men. 
system also could not support all the peripherals that the standard Genesis could. Lacking a way to connect to the power base system, the Sega 32X, and the Sega CD, effectively limiting the Nomad to just the Genesis game library. That being said, the Nomad was the only handheld that could also connect to a TV. Pioneering this trail 22 years before Nintendo's Switch. It also featured a control report at the bottom of the console for a second player. The first player was required though to use the built-in controller on the console itself, as connecting a controller for the first player was not possible. The screen was the same one used as Game Gear as we said earlier, as such, suffered from the same brightness and contrast issues as well as motion blur. The biggest complaint, despite the plethora of first, was the Nomad's battery life. Despite being rated for an average of 4 hours, you were lucky if you made it to 2, and that's if you had the volume down and the screen darkened. The inevitable glow of the low battery LED looming over the system like the life support system at an underfunded hospital, just waiting for the time to light up and end your playthrough without much of a warning. Run. The first reviews of the console consisted of basically middle-of-the-road commentary from magazines and that one guy who ran a website from his mom's basement. Game Players Magazine called the Nomad's price of $179 a bit steep, while praising the console as the best portable system on the market. Others considered it a great buy due to its compatibility with the Genesis game library. The next year, Nintendo slayed the handheld market again when they released Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy, just a few months after the Nomad's release, beating the competition on outdated hardware, something they're still doing to this day, driving a nail directly into the Nomad's coffin. Sega from the day it was released decided to shift its focus to the Saturn, leaving the Nomad to fend on its own. By 1999, the Genesis was already 11 years old. Sega no longer produced a system and allowed Majesco to make a budget version, the Genesis 3 in Mexico. 16-bit games were all but dead, moving to Florida in their select retirement homes. The Nomad was already considered a relic, and despite only being a little over three years old, was discontinued by Sega, leaving the Dreamcast as the only system being produced by the once mighty game giant. In the 1990s, while Nintendo was known for their betrayals, Sega was known for their missteps and bad timing. A lot was learned while Peripheral after Peripheral was being released for the Genesis, which resulted in a lot of the public losing a ton of trust and moving on to other brands that weren't beating dead horses. While the Nomad is indeed a very neat piece of hardware now, while our hindsight is 2020 and all love for anything retro has erupted into its own market, at the time it was too little too late. Its low sales of around 1 million units will leave it as one of gaming's biggest commercial failures. He handed it to me. Are you... What? Are you kidding me? No, not at all. I, I can't believe you got me into this. Like... Where are we? In the woods? And why are you still playing that? No reason. It's fine. I'm scared to death. What do you want me to do? What? Who is this guy? He seemed like a nice guy. He collects video games, which he's not lying. A little broken shelf! Are you kidding and I me? I think he wants to be our friend. <laughs> Friends! Look, what is that? Oh, um. I don't know, not my problem. <clears throat> you, you, are you done?
this time I'm gonna reach for the stars. But Tails, you know, last time you did that, you were gone for so long, I didn't know if you were gonna make it. Yeah, but this time, I can do it. I can do it. I can go all the way. No, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. No! Sonic says, that's no good. I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. Well, what about the right foot? <laughs> We're gamers. You're a gamer, right? Uh -huh. The only thing we want is someone to play games with, uh, a gaming friend. Do you want to be that with us? Okay. Bring it in. Bring it in. Polite thing to unlock the door for somebody. Shut up. Just shut up. Oh shit! What? 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 We have to go back. I forgot the nomad. No, no we're out of here. Well, at least I still have my nomad. <laughs> 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 